In this episode, we'll be talking about how to transform transactional organizations into ones that are customer centric. We'll be talking about the power of an insight. And finally, we'll ask the question, are we all designers? And here is the guest of this episode. I'm Jose Mello, and this is the Service Design Show. Hi guys, my name is Mark Fontijn and welcome to the Service Design Show. The show where you get to learn what some of the world's best service designers are currently thinking about. So you can use that knowledge to transform services and businesses all around the world to become more human-centered and eventually more successful. We bring you a new episode every two weeks on Thursday. So if you don't want to miss anything, be sure to subscribe. My guest in this episode is Jose Mello. Jose is the head of innovation at Liberty Mutual in Brazil. And he also teaches about service design and design thinking at several universities. For the next 30 minutes or so, we'll be talking about three topics. How do you transform transactional organizations into ones that are customer centric? What is the power of an insight? And finally, are we all designers? If you'd like to fast forward to one of these topics, check out the episode guide down below in the description or just stick around and enjoy the whole episode. So let's jump right in. Welcome to the show, Jose. Oh, very good to be here, Mark. Uh, Jose, uh, we just had a small chat uh, before the show and you told me that you've been into service design for quite a long time. And I'm super interested. Do you remember the first time that you actually heard about service design or got in touch with it? So that's a very good question. Uh, actually, uh, I think the first time I got in contact with service design was in the 80s because I was with my mom on a bank and we got a huge line to withdraw some money mm. at the bank. And it was not only one line, but it was like three lines. So I get to go from one line to the other. Uh, and at that point, I, I didn't know what service design was and I was just a kid. But 30 years later, uh, I, I met uh, uh, a bunch of people who were uh, speaking and, and talking about service design. I was looking for uh, uh, a way to uh, to understand more how could I uh, deliver and design better services for people. I've been doing that for, for, at, in my entire life, and uh, I think at that point was the only was the moment that I realized what service design was. Was my first contact, like 2007, 2008, mm -hmm. almost 30 years later. <laughs> but I have I have been experiencing service design for my entire life. Or the lack of service. Or the design. lack of, yeah, yeah. Or the lack of. <laughs> so and and maybe that experience on the bank uh, made me the professional I am today and. Because it was so frustrating that I, I wanted to do something to change that type of thing, hmm, you know. Hmm, hmm, hmm. All right. Uh, interesting. Uh, the, that the lack of service design is the, the first memory. I, I can relate to that. So, uh, Jose, you sent me three topics that we can talk about in the show. And I have mm -hmm. them next to me. And you have a few question starters that I gave you. And we'll be co-creating the questions as we go along for the next 20 minutes, right? Oh, perfect. Okay. So I'll pick the first topic and I'll surprise you. I'll just pick a random one. I won't do them in the, in the order you gave them. So I'll, <laughs> I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll pick this one. And this one is called Customer Centric Organizations. Do you have a question starter that goes along uh, with this one? Yes, yes. So uh, let's start with this one. How can we? How can we? Uh, make the organizations more customer centric or how to make that. Uh, I've been working on that for, I would say, at least the past 10 years. So uh, combining my experience at Itaú and then my experience now as the head of innovation at Liberty Mutual here in Brazil. And uh, 
I, I think one one thing that is key to turn a transactional organization into a customer centric organization is uh, people. Hmm. We most of people believe that is a matter of processes. So making better processes, but it's not about processes. It's about people hmm. because uh, are those people who deliver the processes. Uh, and uh, uh, for example, here at Liberty Mutual, we've been working for the past two years and a half to create a culture of, of, uh, of customer centricity into the company. Uh, because we strongly believe that it will deliver uh, uh, our differentiation in the market. We will bring this differentiation to the market. And we've been doing that starting by the people, starting to uh, bring people together and, uh, and making them understand uh, why think about the customer is so important. And you mean so, the employees uh, probably, right? The employees. The employees, yeah, yeah. yes. I'm, I'm speaking about the employees. Yeah. So people who are out there speaking with the customer every day and following a script hmm. to deliver uh, one type of service. And most of them, they do that, but they, they do, it, do that without understanding what are the real needs of the customers. Hmm. So uh, 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 using... Using it as an example as well. Uh, last year we did a project here. I'll show you just the the big the big uh, bookcase. Wow. So in the past two years we did a project here where we brought people uh, 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 on the street to live exactly what the customer lives every day when they need the service uh, from our company. Mm-hmm. So we sent people to see uh, the, the tow trucks uh, uh, mm-hmm. helping a, a customer, uh, one, a person uh, who had an accident, how they deal with that problem and how we deal with the process. And we, we, we engaged something around 100 people on the, on the project from several different parts of the company uh, just to make them see what's the level of services they, they deliver to, to the customer. Mm-hmm. And that was a game changer uh, for us here to get people involved and engaged uh, in the process. What, was, it and, hard and to get, was it hard to get people involved? Uh, it was hard because people don't have time. Mm-hmm. They never have time. Mm-hmm. They, are, they, they are always busy because they have something to deliver. They have a, 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 an, an operation to run. Mm-hmm. But that operation uh, just exists because of the customers. If customers don't buy, the operation doesn't exist. So I, I think the, uh, in, in a nutshell, I think uh, uh, engaging people in the, in the, the customer mindset uh, is really key to, uh, to, to uh, move companies from a, a transactional company to a more customer-centric company. So, and if you would have to give, uh, what has been your biggest learning from the past three and a half years? And if you would, ha- would have the opportunity to do it over again, what would you do differently? Well, uh, very good question. Uh, I, I haven't thought about <laughs> that, but I would say that uh, maybe I would get people on the street uh, sooner than I did hmm. because I worked more than one year, one year and a half almost, uh, to do this type of project to, to uh, get people from, from inside and, and go outside uh, with them. Hmm. I started to, to, uh, to uh, create this change by the inside. So bringing people on, on meetings, speaking about uh, the customer importance and, and who is the customer, and it took me one year and something uh, to realize that it was not working mm. well. Mm. If, I, if I didn't get people and put them on the street to see what happens in real life, they, we would be speaking uh, until today about uh, why uh, focus, focus on customers uh, is something key for the company. 
And for, for one example for you, last year, Liberty was uh, awarded uh, the, the company in Brazil, the insurance company in Brazil, that most re respects the customer. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, it's, a, it's, a, it, it's a work uh, that we've been doing not for so long, and we, we start to see the, mm -hmm. the, the changes. And the so you're, you're saying it's really all about being in touch with the customer, just get get out of the office, get onto the street, talk to the people that are using your service, right? That's what you're saying, basically. Yeah, yeah that's it. There's and no for everyone, yeah. from from the the top director inside the company until the 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 lowest levels on the company, mm -hmm. they need to know who the customer is and be in touch with them. Mm -hmm. That would be my my advice for someone who wants to to uh, to go down that path. Hmm. Let's let's keep it at that for this topic, uh, uh, Jose, and uh, move on to the second one because um, right, I'll pick this one and uh, keep the, the most controversial for the for the last. Uh, the second topic is the power of an insight. I guess it relates to what we just talked about. Uh, do you have a question starter? Oh yes, yes. Um, tum, 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 tum. So let me see here. Let me see here. Uh, the power of an insight. The power of an insight. Uh, Don't make it too hard for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, what if? Yeah. So. Uh, Maybe the question here is, uh, what if we could think of an insight more as an interpretation uh, of a fact rather than the real fact? All right, it's, that's, it's so, a, that's the, something you need to explain. <laughs> yeah, that's a trick question. Uh, but... Uh, let me let me try to to explain that. Uh, I've been doing research for a long time, especially research to understand customers and to design services uh, for those customers. And we designers, uh, most of the projects that that I see, we designers, we go there, see a fact. So we see that people wear uh, yellow shirts. And then we write down an insight saying that people wear yellow shirt. Uh, the problem with that is that it doesn't make any sense uh, to create something just knowing that people wear yellow shirts. Mm -hmm. So we should think of an insight more like an interpretation of that rather than the fact itself. So... We, we should try to understand why people wear yellow shirts and how that relates to the service or the, the, the project that I'm doing right now. And it's so hard to see people uh, um, taking that step ahead mm. and trying to, uh, to uh, create a point of view about, about that specific uh, uh, topic that they saw on the street hmm. uh, that I think that's why I, I, I chose that topic to speak hmm. about. So it's like the, the, for me it's the difference between almost like uh, quantitative research versus qualitative or design research when where we as designers are or should be uh, intrinsically motivated to understand the why. Yes. Totally true. Yeah. Totally true. And so, how and, do how do you break that? So I can imagine that if you go uh, on the street with employees and uh, hope that they will find an insight, and you see that they get stuck at the yellow shirt, how do you help them to move beyond that? So we usually uh, do several rounds of discussion. So one thing that we, we always do when someone goes out to, to do some observation is to list their, what we call their, their top insights. Mm -hmm. 
which 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 really are not insights. They are just observations of yeah. what they saw on the street. And when we get together, we put everyone together who did the same uh, the 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 who did the same research, and we start a discussion of why that is important, why that specific observation is important for us. And that's how we come from uh, like 50 observations on the, on the streets mm. to uh, three to five really driving insights mm. that can help us uh, create a, a, a better service for our customer. Mm. So, so the discussion yeah. is a yeah. very important point of the, of the process. And, and is it also, do you uh, use evidence from the field research? Because uh, in our projects, uh, for instance, we do photo studies and then just hanging up the mm -hmm. photos and having the uh, studio filled with these photos. It just helps you to, to see the patterns and to have a better discussion. Are you using some techniques like that or? Yeah, yeah, we use some techniques like that. We, we use a lot of photo uh, uh, research mm. and because that's very immersive. So even the, even the, the, the people who didn't uh, uh, had the chance to 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 go out for a research, but they are they, we need them as part of the discussion uh, to being that immersive uh, space uh, helps a lot to yeah. to gain the the right discussion. Yeah, 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 and 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 uh, I think from what I've seen, for instance, um, what helps is um, forcing people to actually look through a camera. Uh, you know, uh, because they see other things during the research. So uh, if they don't use a camera and they don't have to make a photo, for instance, uh, to fo during observations, they will mm -hmm. see past the things that they are used to, right? And with a camera, they they, they will have to make a photo of it. Right? Oh yeah, that. Yeah. Oh, that's a very good one. That's so a very it, good it one. It just forces people to 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 pay attention to the things that are common, I guess. Yeah. Oh, that's a very good one. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I'll try that next time. <laughs> I haven't done that, but I'll try that next time. Yeah. And um, so the, the power of an insight, uh, anything else you'd like to say or add about that? Anything? So uh, I think we, we, we spoke a lot about how to gather uh, uh, information from our observations and research and how to make it, uh, turn it into an insight. Uh, maybe we could speak a little bit about uh, what to do with that insight sure. right yeah. now. So, uh, which I, I believe is, is where the power of an insight is. Hmm. So once we, we have all this discussion and we could write down one really powerful insight uh, for that for that project, and one inside should be something like uh, a very short uh, phrase, something that uh, really uh, and is really unique to that to that project. Uh, we we start to understand the boundaries of the project, and one thing that is really hard for someone who is designing is not what the project should be or should address but what the project should not address. Mm, 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 mm. And I think the insight, uh, it creates the boundary of the project so that we can understand what are we not going to solve with that project. Because when we start, you would like to solve the entire uh, project and all the problems that the world has. Mm, mm. Uh, once you define the insights you're going to work with, you are creating the boundaries, you are creating this is what we're going to solve. I'm not going to solve anything else. And I think this is where the, the this is why we, we come up with those insights, just right, to help right. us frame the yeah. direction of the project. And, and it's all, that, that frame is also super useful, I guess, during a project to uh, see if you're still within the scope, right? If you're, if you're oh, still really? uh, yeah. Yeah, doing the things you should be doing. Yeah. All right. Make sure you're not going to uh, stray to a different exactly, uh, yeah. path yeah. And, and start solving a, 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 an insurance project and end uh, on, a, 
on a pharmaceutical uh, project, in, you know. So yeah, uh, insights are very useful to create boundaries. That's that's interesting, as you say. Let's um, time is uh, flying by, so let's let's move on to the the third topic. And uh, I think a Swedish company once said this, right? And uh, the third topic is mm -hmm. called "We are all designers." Mm -hmm. Do you have a question starter for this one? Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll pick this one. When will? When will we uh, all become uh, designers? Aren't we designers already? As the Swedish uh, company yes. said. Yes. <laughs> oh yes, we we are, we are, uh, but we don't realize we are, mm. and I think that's the that's the that's the problem, mm. because everything that uh, is uh, not nature. In, in the earth was designed by someone. Mm. And for those who believe in a God, even nature was designed by someone. Uh, so uh, if everything was designed, it was designed by a person that has or doesn't have a, a design background, mm -hmm. but they need the design ability. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have a lot of services that doesn't have any design in it. And, and, and that's why it's so frustrating uh, for the regular people. Hmm. So uh, I strongly believe that everyone has the ability to design and everyone uh, is uh, innovative in their, in their sanction, you know. But uh, we are not trained for that. And if we had, uh, maybe in the early stages of school, uh, very simple and soft skills uh, for design uh, would help a lot uh, for us to be able uh, to design things better in our world. All right, so I have two young kids. Now, Jose, help me. What, what soft skills should I uh, help them with in these early years? So, uh, so uh, I'll list you uh, some of them. So one, for example, uh, a spirit of participation. So it's the, the, the willingness to collaborate with other people to build something. Because in the world we live today, we cannot build something alone. We don't do anything alone. Hmm. We need people. Uh, the, the second one, I would say, is experimentation. So it's learn by doing not by only thinking. Uh, because when we, 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 uh, we use a lot our thinking process, but we don't make it tangible, uh, we are not really testing how people are going to relate to that specific thing. So I, I would advise you to teach your kids to experiment and experience more things mm -hmm. and, and learn and fail and move ahead. And it, we are very afraid to fail. And the, the interesting part, of course, is if you look at, if I look at my young kids, you know, they don't even have the notion of failing. They just do stuff. Yes, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's not failing for them, right? It's, it's just another experiment. But somewhere in, along the journey that we take through school and through university, we, we get influenced by the notion of failure. Yes. And we, we begin to we, we we begin to to uh, we become afraid of exper experimenting uh, new things mm. because we we don't want to fail. So I'm not going to test because I don't want to fail. And actually, uh, uh, failing or or the experimentation process uh, lowers down a lot the risk that you are you are. Uh, you, you are going through, you, you know. So how do you, um, how do you help people that are, I don't know, in their th 30s, 40s, 50s to rediscover their, uh, their ability to experiment? Mm -hmm. how, how do you do that? So uh, I think uh, something that is very important, I think, is... Uh, first, uh, help them 
with some very uh, maybe basic skills so that they can understand that they have the ability to experiment. Because sometimes we hear, them, we hear uh, from people that they, uh, I just don't know how to do it. I, I, I know you're right. I think you're right, but I don't know how to do it. So we have to help them understand very basic skills from uh, uh, some techniques mm -hmm. to do that. So observation techniques and um, some building techniques to help them do that. So be, uh, come with, a, uh, I would say, a common language of what uh, is to, to experiment. Mm. And the other thing I think is more related to the environment where they are working in. So the environment uh, needs to be friendly for experimentation and, uh, and it also uh, has a lot to do with the rewards or the reward system that you, you put in place. So if people uh, work uh, alone on a cubicle, they will never collaborate with anyone. So you need open spaces, you need the environment to be friendly for them. Mm. Uh, if they, they stay on the same uh, seat for the entire day, for the entire week, they're not going to collaborate. Mm. They need to move around. Mm. They need to have that mobility. Uh, so, and also the reward system. You should re reward not only the results that people bring, but also how they made it. So how, what's the process that you took to get there? Let me understand that yeah. and reward them uh, for each step of the process. And I, and I guess this also strongly relates to the first topic we talked about, about cu customer centricity. Uh, <clears throat> if we look at the process, if, pe if companies would reward employees that take their time to go on the street, talk to customers, uh, it would probably create a totally different atmosphere. So putting those, oh, really? yeah, putting those measures into place uh, is really essential. Yeah, totally true. So, um, Jose, final question uh, for you. And uh, this is uh, your opportunity to ask the people who are listening or viewing this episode to ask them a question. Is there something you'd like to ask? So... I'll, I'll ask them, uh, what was your most uh, powerful insight uh, listening to this, uh, watching our show today? Right, yeah, that's a good one because that's also something I ask at the end of the episode. So that's, the, <laughs> that's a good question. What, what was the biggest insight uh, from this episode? Leave a comment. Uh, we are really curious. So... Uh, Jose, thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing your thoughts and ideas. And uh, it was my pleasure. Oh, thank you very much, Mark. So what is your biggest insight from this episode? Let us know down below in the comments. This show is all about helping you to become a better service designer by sharing real life stories of people that are currently shaping the service design field. If this is your first time here and you'd like to see more interviews, Check out some of the past episodes and be sure to subscribe. I'll see you in two weeks time with a new episode and for now, thanks for watching.